Welcome to Cultura Latina. Today we're having a very special show on street art and hip hop music in Latin America. We'll take a look on how countries like Peru and Honduras are using street art and music as a way to express themselves socially and politically. Take a look. With the purpose of creating spaces of creativity and expression in Peru, organized hip hop is one of those movements that grows every day. One of their best representatives is the band Comité Pocoflo. Come meet them. With Comité, we have become established as one of the groups that has more work here in Peru. But this is on the basis of visiting the barrios, learning from them, and articulating with them. Through hip hop is how I started to become politically conscious. Here we assume the confrontational aspect of hip hop, and we assume it in actions, in self sustainable projects, organized dialogues, and places where we can express ourselves. What I would like with this is to get a solution so that people are not suffering. I rap about these subjects, like exploitation of work, police repression, and also a type of reconciliation because the police are also people like us. I think people are becoming more conscious. They are taking the music, they are making their groups, their collectives, their organizations to do a more conscious side. For us, doing hip hop is not alienated. We understand it comes from outside, but the historical process where it was created is with the participation of poor blacks, whites, and Latinos in a very specific situation that also corresponds to a process of struggle in defense of their rights, and we do the same. It is an option to counter the advancement of the neoliberal system in which we live. Let's say we have the format from over there, but we talk about what's happening here, and we take action in accordance to what we see in our reality. We also try to rescue texts written by Peruvians, or we talk about direct realities of the indigenous peasant or coca grower. Therefore, I believe that in that way you reaffirm your reality. The use of Quechua is a process. It was a lot of work for me to write because I'm not a Quechua speaker. My grandmother speaks Quechua, and it was with her help, but also with the help of translators. And it's cool because it doesn't let you talk about superficial things. It forces you to talk about things that are more transcendental. Hip 
Hipcore una simi pa' mi simil Este es el misil junto a Arguedas y María Tegui mi bro Hipcore una simi pa' mi simil Ey, este es el misil junto a Arguedas y María Tegui mi bro Porque hoy me toca organizarme siempre pa' adelante mi bro The new generations that are coming out are not only rapping and singing, but are also working as much or more than us. And that is amazing, it's really cool and rewarding, because it tells you that you are not the only crazy guy who is fighting for something, but there are many, and soon there will be millions. Street art has taken the walls of Tegucigalpa as one of the strongest voices of protest in the Honduran capital. Here's a taste on how graffitis can really start a change. Cabello, yeah. de mis calles, Juan y me observa y no desmayes. Si sí es, uh -huh. vive en mis calles y observa la pobreza. Mi gente busca sobresalir con su destreza. Tegucigalpa, the capital of Honduras, is actually one of Latin America's most dangerous cities. Five years ago, it caught the world's attention when it became the site of daily confrontations between the police and protesting citizens during the coup d'etat of 2009. As a consequence of those street battles, art began to change in the city, and protests have become part of daily life. I think that graffiti in the capital basically means having a political impact. Never before in the history of the city has there been such a presence of graffiti protesters, have started to use the paint to say what the media wasn't saying during the political crisis. We used spray paint to write on the walls, but a lot of it had spelling errors, and it got to the point where it stopped being productive for protest actions, and instead of helping, it was affecting our goals, because society stopped reading what we wrote in the streets. They felt uncomfortable with it. There was a frustration, and that's when we started working with the ideas on the needs of artists like us. We created collectives to do something more elaborate, and we went from words to pictures. We used colours, shapes, and we found other ways to express ourselves. And little by little, people started to absorb and receive the message in a better way. I think that writing in the streets is also graffiti, but it doesn't attract the same attention. People think of it as vandalism. But if they see a drawing, maybe they don't get the message immediately. But the drawing gets their attention. Then they turn around, look at it, and then they get the message. Recently, the municipality of Tegucigalpa announced that it will soon take actions to paint over the walls with graffiti and murals in a project called Redecorating the City's Buildings. Street artists have been shown much concern at the threat of losing their work. I imagine that some of the authorities have felt affected by some of the messages that we have left. Not only me, because many street artists have left really good messages. If they paint the walls, we would have to work more. Because we know that what we do is illegal, but many of the things they do are also illegal. Working more is not such a big problem. This is a risky thing to do in the streets. We have suffered police persecution and discrimination by society. We have been insulted. We have been shot at many times. They've chased us out of places to stop us from painting. Because even when people agree on what we are drawing, they are afraid of the repercussions because of what we say. Maestro Urbano is finishing some graffiti near the hotel area of the city, protesting against the constant blackouts that have been affecting the population of the Honduras capital. They have been rationing our electricity, and sometimes for all of the day. And they say that this is because the National Energy Company doesn't have the capacity to provide the electricity the city needs. And that's why they've cut it off. But everybody knows that this has to do with the economic and political agenda, as the energy companies have been doing whatever they want for years. 
The walls in Tegucigalpa have become one of the most effective means to express the thoughts of the population. And it's going to take more than just painting over these pieces of art to sell in the voices that every day are finding new ways and new spaces to express themselves. Thanks for watching. Next week we'll be back with another taste on Latin American culture. See you then.